Yo, what is up guys? I'm back with another video this time and another high quality top 5 list. As I record this part of the video, it's actually my birthday, July 7th. And now, I'm not asking for much, but could you guys hit that like or subscribe just for my birthday? I appreciate it. As always, the links to the mice in this video are in the description down below if you're interested in buying some. Let me know in the comments what mouse you guys have right now and which one's your favorite out of these five. Anyways, on with the video. The first mouse that we got on this list is, of course, the Razer Death Adder V2. The plain and simple design of this mouse makes it fit right in on both an office desk and a hardcore gaming space. The angled body makes your hand and wrist rest at a more natural angle, making it comfortable to use for long periods of time. The bottom of the mouse features two plastic feet that make the whole unit glide silky smooth across just any mouse pad, woven cloth, or hard plastic. The mouse is also pretty lightweight, making it possible to reduce hand and wrist fatigue. You can customize up to five different DPI settings, including different sensitivities for X and Y axis movement. This mouse comes equipped with 20,000 DPI and tracking of 650 inches per second. The two buttons on the side can be remapped with either mouse or keyboard inputs. It's worth stating that the Death Adder V2 very much feels like an entry level mouse. If you're interested in introducing some RGB elements into your gaming setup, the Death Adder V2 has two different lighting zones, the scroll wheel and the Razer logo. You can choose from a staggering 16.8 million colors and customize the lighting themes in Razer's Synapse 3 desktop app. You guys know I love to start off my list strong, and for the 70 Canadian dollars, this is no exception. The left and right mouse buttons are more durable too. They're optical, rather than mechanical, which means they use an infrared light beam to register clicks. That means they should deliver fewer misclicks, lower latency, and have a longer life. Razer estimates that they should last about 70 million clicks. And I don't know if you guys understood that, but that basically means that this mouse is a laser mouse. It weighs about 80 grams with a dragless cord, so you won't even notice that it's still wired. It's around 2.8 inches wide, 5 inches long, and 1.6 inches high, so it's a pretty small mouse. Unlike other Razer mouses, on the Death Adder V2, there's less separation between the buttons, with raised, pimpled portions on the panel instead. They're still grippy, but it looks much slicker. Without seams to separate them, the dirt buildup is also less of a concern. The matte black coating on the top of the mouse stops your hand from slipping. The up and down sensitivity buttons have been redesigned. I told you guys, I don't mess around when it comes to these lists, I come in hard right at the start. This next mouse we got on this list is more of a budget option for a mouse. Still good quality, but if you don't really care about your mouse, then this is the one for you. There are plenty of affordable gaming mice worth your money today, but few can have you with complete confidence, quite like the Logitech G203 LightSync. It's an all-around performer, delivering stable and consistent performance in a sleek package, and is absolutely the best cheap gaming mouse around today. You're not the only one who might find this mouse a bit familiar. The G203 LightSync is a wired mouse. It's light speed that you're looking for if you're after a wireless mouse. Instead, the LightSync denotes this mouse complete capability with the Logitech G app and RGB lighting system, which is able to unify RGB lighting effects across compatible Logitech products. What's somewhat confusing is that there are non-LightSync products that are also able to integrate with said app to varying degrees. Where some mice only have one LightSync zone configurable with the Logitech G app, this mouse has three. The G203 LightSync's three-zone lighting allows for two newly available RGB lighting effects, color wave and color blend. Expect the same near ambidextrous design with the G203 LightSync, complete with two buttons under the pad where your right thumb would sit. These buttons aren't swappable or removable to the opposite side, which certainly comes as a surprising flaw in the Logitech G203's otherwise one-size-fits-all design. Nevertheless, it's a simple design, and one which Logitech aptly calls tried and true. The unnamed gaming grade sensor within the G203 offers a DPI range of 200 to 8000, which should prove more than enough for all of the most colossal 4K monitors. The optical sensor in the G203 is more suitable for decent and consistent gaming than the big AAA games, but of course it can handle all. It also turns up a clean sheet in mouse sensor tests, so at 30 Canadian dollars on Amazon, the 85 gram G203 LightSync sits within a hotly contended category of budget conscious gaming mice. 
The third spot on the list goes to the most expensive mouse thus far, the Razer Naga Pro, which is considered to be the best MMO mouse on the market. The Razer Naga Pro goes wireless with a Razer Hyperspeed Wireless and Bluetooth connectivity. It also picks up optical mouse switches and the over-the-top 20,000 DPI sensor, which to a lot of people is unnecessary, but to certain gamers, this mouse is a dream come true, and I'll show you why. The overall design of the Naga Pro stays close to some previous designs, but it has gained a bit of weight to accommodate the new tech. The Naga Pro is 7mm wider and heavier at 117 grams, but thanks to the 100% PTFE feet, it glides smoothly across most surfaces. The bigger mouse also takes some getting used to. The contoured mouse buttons and a rest for your ring finger make it easier to hold onto with textured rubber grips. Similar to the Death Adder, this mouse has a lifespan of an estimated 70 million clicks and a 0.2 millisecond response time. To put that into perspective, a blink is estimated to be between 100 and 150 milliseconds. The three swappable plates have two, six, and 12 buttons, which you can remap to whatever you'd like. One notable change on the Naga Pro is more traditional six button layouts instead of the radial layout used on other Razer mice. Remapping buttons in the Razer Synapse is child's play, a simple point and click affair. You can do anything from simple keyboard shortcuts to binding complex game macros, as well as adjust DPI stages, polling rates, liftoffs, power management, and of course, Razer Chroma lighting. Your settings are saved to the Naga Pro's onboard memory, so it'll work exactly as you set it on another machine. You can still switch between stored DPI presets via the step switches located behind the scroll wheel, of course. Obviously, none of this stuff matters if you have a laggy experience, but thankfully, the hyperspeed wireless does not disappoint. While wired, this mouse has a 6 millisecond response time. But while you have the hyperspeed wireless activated, it has a 6.1 millisecond response time. A 0.1 millisecond difference. The Bluetooth was slower by 4 to 6 milliseconds, but that's way slower than a human can even blink. So I'm not even sure if you'd even notice that. Or care. Now, after hearing all of that technology from this mouse, you'd think that the battery life sucked, right? But the claim from Razer of a 150 hour battery life proves to be true. The only slight downside is that it's about 150 Canadian dollars, although right now as I'm recording this, it's only 99 dollars on Amazon, which is a crazy steal. And of course, the fact that it is a pretty big mouse, it's 4.6 inches long, 2.9 inches wide, and 1.6 inches high. But apart from that, it seems like the mouse of dreams for any gamer, especially MMO gamers. The fourth mouse we got on this list is a more user-friendly mouse than normal, since left-handed people also exist in case you forgot, using a mouse can sometimes be really inconvenient for them. So I chose a more ambidextrous mouse, if you guys don't know what ambidextrous means, here it is. Anyways, this is the best one on the market right now. Steel Series Sensei 310 is one of the best gaming mice around, but the main part is that it's suitable for a left-handed gamer. The Sensei 310 fits in your hand just like other Steel Series mice, but it's a great shape for either left or right-handed gamers looking for a mid-sized ambidextrous mouse. That means it has a pair of identical thumb buttons on the left and the right, a common issue for ambidextrous mice. The size and shape of the thumb buttons have been tweaked, making it easy to rock your thumb upwards to press them, but they stay out of the way from any accidental pinky clicks. It's also an impressively lightweight mouse too, at just 92 grams. That 50G acceleration and 350 plus IPS tracking, the 50G acceleration, the 350 plus IPS tracking, and the 12,000 DPI means it stays responsive no matter how animated you get. Part of the Sensei 310's low weight is the fact it's a small mouse, only coming in at 4.9 inches in length, 2.7 in width, and 1.5 in height. Custom True Move 3 optical 1 to 1 tracking esports sensors helps anybody, left handed or right handed, move the mouse with incredible ease across any surface. It has the excellent Steel Series Sensei ambidextrous design for claw and palm grip styles with exclusive split trigger left and right buttons guaranteed to deliver a 50 million click durability. Two zone multicolor prism RGB illumination for customizable lighting on the scroll wheel and on the Steel Series logo near the back of the mouse with a unique Steel Series software which can save your performance and lighting settings wherever you are. No stability issues, no tracking errors, and no response time delays is what makes this ambidextrous mouse a top pick for left handed gamers. Coming in at a nice $70 to $80, but at the time of recording, it's right now 
65 Canadian. The fifth and final mouse we got on this list is a slightly bigger mouse than normal, which may benefit games with bigger hands. If you've made it this far into the video, I really appreciate that. Make sure to comment down below what your favorite mouse from this video is and what mouse you have right now. I'm curious to see. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content and give me list ideas down below. But now onto the mouse. The Corsair Sabre RGB Pro Champion Series is an optical gaming mouse that strips away of anything unnecessary to deliver a light 74 gram high performance esport mouse. With 5 inches in length, 2.3 inches in width, and 1.6 inches in height at an impressive 80 Canadian dollars. The shape is almost symmetrical, fitting snugly into the palm for a confident grip that won't slip or slide. The tapered sides allow your thumb and pinky to rest comfortably. Certain people might find it a little big, but I'm sure most people will find it perfect for their usual palm grip. The main mouse buttons and thumb buttons are slightly textured, different from the rest of the mouse, which does improve grip. There are two chunky thumb buttons that are satisfyingly clicky, as are the main mouse buttons. They use Corsair's Quick Strike switches, a design which leaves zero gap between the buttons and their OMRON switches. So this apparently makes them faster, more responsive, and more consistent for 50 million clicks. At the front of the thumb is a LED indicator that shows the DPI preset that the mouse is on at any given time. It's got three light bars which alternate when you switch the DPI using the button located behind the scroll wheel. You can adjust the presets using Corsair's ICUV software, which also saves them directly to the mouse. Thanks to the 18,000 DPI optical sensor, you can have steps from as low as 100 all the way to 18,000. Not the highest DPI on the list, but way more than you would ever need to use. But what makes the Sabre Pro really special is the 8,000 Hz polling rate. That essentially means your commands to the computer are 8 times faster than the standard 1000 Hz on most gaming mice. Unfortunately, Corsair says the Axon hyperprocessing technology required to sustain this high speed polling will require a more beefy CPU setup. You'll get a warning in the ICUE software every time you activate the AK polling. So if you do have more outdated tech in your PC, this might not be the mouse for you. There are plenty of controls to fine tune in the Sabre Pro though. You can adjust the two-tone RGB lighting found on the scroll wheel and the Corsair logo at the back of the mouse. Each of the Sabre Pro 6 buttons can also be remapped in the ICOE software. The macro editor is pretty simple to capture and assign to any key of your choice. Additionally, Corsair gave the Sabre Pro a drag reducing paracord USB cable that will not slow down those hyper fast polling signals or your fast hand movements by dragging along the surface. There are also 100% replaceable PTFE glide pads on the bottom of the mouse. That's it for this list. Let me know what the next list should be, and I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful day.